Welcome. In this session, you will learn something about the cost of capital. We are understanding intrinsic valuation, we need the cost of capital as the discount rate from which we estimate the value of the firm. But what is it? We are going to talk about it in the two perspectives. First, the perspective of the capital providers, investors. And second, in the perspective of the users of capital, the companies. So follow me, let us begin. In the end of this session, you should be able to understand the concept and meaning of capital structure and the cost of capital and be able to calculate the weighted average cost of capital based on the information available. So let's talk about the concept of cost of capital, considering investors' perspective as well as firms' perspective. We understand that uh, companies need capital to run business. They need capital to invest. And from investment, they generate revenue. The objective of the company is to maximize the worth or to maximize shareholder value. So you have two things to know. What do the suppliers of capital need? And what should the company do? It is a balance between the two. It's a balance between capital providers and the recipients of capital. In between, there should be an agreement on what should investors, capital suppliers, need and get from their funds and what should the company achieve this is what we need to talk about to understand the concept of cost of capital so let's start with investors they put money into companies why they need something what do they need? They need return from the investments. So what is the objective? To maximize the return. So by doing so, they have one important question. What is the minimum return should the company provide to them? So they can be persuaded to inject funds into those companies. And when we talk about investors, we're not only talking about equity holders or owners. We are talking about all different types of investors. Owners, common equity holders, if you like, debt holders, and even preference shareholders when applicable. On the other side, we have the company. The company is run by managers and it is acting on behalf of investors. They need capital. And the capital is supplied by who? By investors. They use capital to generate revenue, aiming at generating investment returns. So capital is not free. As long as investors need something from their funds, it's not free. The company will have to incur costs. So what is the objective? When raising funds, the objective is to try to minimize cost of capital. So what is the main question to the company is 
what should be the minimum rate of return to satisfy investors. So they have to strike a balance between the needs of investors and the ability of the company to generate returns to investors. That's where you have the cost of capital somewhere between. And therefore, the firm's perspective, cost of capital, is the rate of return required to persuade existing and potential investors to invest into the company. What about investors? In the investor perspective, the cost of capital is the required rate of return that they could have earned from alternative investments of equal risk. So which means risk is an important aspect in determining the rate of return. If investors think of alternative investments, they will require higher rate of return for companies with higher risk for risk compensation. And therefore, in estimating the cost of capital, the cost of capital takes into account risk. And we shall see in among cost of capital components, risk should be addressed. Risk should be addressed in the cost of equity, in the cost of debt, and even in the cost of preference stock. So please refer to my book, Corporate Evaluation, A Practical Approach with a Case Study. It is available in hardcover, softcover, as well as ebook. And please do not forget to subscribe, like, share, and press a bell button so as to get notifications on lessons and updates, which you can be of a very important benefit to you. So where does the cost of capital come from? We'll explain this considering capital structure. Capital structure is simply the composition of different financing sources or mix a company uses. And for the purpose of estimating the cost of capital, our capital structure values should consider market value, not book value. And this is because we need the cost of capital to be forward looking, just like any other valuation variables. It can be comprised of common equity, preference equity, as well as debt. In most cases, it will be common equity and debt, as few companies only use preference equity. And this is because preference equity is an hybrid, hybrid source of capital, just like debt. But debt has more advantage than preference equity. The difference between preference equity and debt is covered in one of my sessions. So please continue following me to learn more about these things. So for the Cost of equity portion, there should be the cost of common equity. And I denote is a KE. That is the rate of return on common equity finance portion of the company. And the, on the preference equity, we we'll have the cost of preference equity denoted as KP. And this is basically a fixed rate of dividend per share committed by firm to preference equity holders. And for the debt portion, we have the cost of debt capital. I denote it KD 
and this is interest rate on debt, taking into account interest tax yield. Interest tax yield simply means tax savings on interest expenses. This aspect was discussed in estimating free cash flows. And it is also covered in one of my sessions in cost of debt. So what does it mean? Considering the different types of financing sources, the cost of capital is defined as the weighted average of financing mix and cost of each individual source of capital. So it is referred to as weighted average cost of capital. Why is it weighted? Weight means proportion of each of the financing source. For example, what is the proportion of common equity value in the, in the capital structure of the company? What is the proportion of preference equity and what is the proportion of debt? So the proportion and the required rate of return combined together, they provide the weights, or if you like, weighted average considering all the different types of funding. So if a company has common equity, we'll have the weight of common equity. I denote WE, the proportion of common equity to total market value in the capital structure. And for a company with debt, will have the weight or proportion of debt to the total market value. And for a company with the preference equity, will have the proportion of equity to the total market value. So each of the capital will reflect their market value, not book value. Even if sometimes it may be necessary to assume book value equals market value when it is complicated to determine market value, especially when considering debt and preference equity. So the weighted average cost of capital is calculated as a summation of the weight times the cost of capital of each individual source of capital. That means cost of equity times the weight of equity plus cost of debt times the weight of debt plus the cost of preference stock times its weight. That is the weighted average cost of capital. So how to calculate it? This is a simple example. It is a simple example because information is given. In reality, each of the information should be estimated. And how to estimate each of the weighted average cost of capital variable is among sessions covered in my channel. So continue following by subscribing to this channel. Today, we're just talking about the concept. So in this example, Quadra J is a company with the following capital structure. In US dollar millions of market value. For simplicity, the numbers are given, common equity 55 million, preference equity 20 million and debt. 25 million. The required rate of return for each one of them, cost of equity 14%, cost of preference equity 8%, and pre-tax cost of debt 8%. Corporate income tax rate 33%. 
how do we calculate work? So first we need the total market value of the financing mix, market value of equity plus market value of frequency equity plus market value of debt, $100 million. Next, we need the weight of each, the proportion of equity, 55%. That means the market value of equity divided by total market value. The proportion of preference equity, 20%. That is the market value of preference equity divided by total market value. The proportion of debt, 25%. Market value of debt divided by total market value. And therefore, the weighted average cost of capital will be calculated using this formula. Weight of equity times the cost of equity plus weight of preference equity times the weight of preference equity plus the weight of debt times after tax cost of debt. Remember, the tax aspect will be discussed. So in this case, the weighted average cost of capital will be 10.64%. What does it mean? It means this is an average costs that a company incurs on all its three different sources of funding. In other words, this is an average required rate of return by all the three different types of capital providers. Now, we should take note of the tax effect on the cost of debt. Why is it not reflected in cost of equity and the preference equity? For now, I will explain it with clarity, but details should be found in one of my session is specifically dedicated for this aspect. The reason why the effect of tax is only considered in debt is because interest reduces tax bills. Why? Income tax is calculated when interest expenses have been deducted. So the pre-tax income includes deduction of interest expense. That's why the effective interest is less than what actually the company pays in terms of tax. This is not the case for equity. If there is any reward to equity holders in terms of dividend, it will be determined after taxes have been paid. Earnings available to common shareholders depends on net profit. Some of that can be paid out as dividend and some of it can be retained to increase shareholders' equity in the bank sheet. Similarly, preference dividend should be paid out of net profit. So there's no saving in terms of taxes and that's why the tax effect is not reflected in the other two components. That is equity to common shareholders as well as preference equity. It's very important to understand it and take notes. So this was just a simple example. As we go along, the objective is to estimate work from scratch. 
using information from any company. And which means the following key steps should be considered in estimating weighted average cost of capital. First, to determine the variables and second, to calculate the weighted average cost of capital. Determine the capital structure composition of a company. Determine market value of capital components. Determine the required rate of return for each of the components. Consider corporate tax rate and its implication on the cost of debt and calculate the capital structure weights and finally calculate work. Now, each of these aspects is covered in my sessions. We'll learn how to determine the capital structure, how to estimate the cost of equity, how to estimate the cost of debt, and how to estimate the cost of pregnant stock. Not in this session, but in other sessions. Please follow to learn more about this. Thank you very much for now. I hope you have enjoyed. Let's keep learning. Bye-bye. Have a good time.